All right, so I am animating on the stage. I am building assets, kind of repeating what I had done before to do more of my storyboard, which is the tongue reaching out and grabbing the creature with this large creature in the background. And so sure enough, he's getting there, he's getting to the back, and then he's gonna be gone, right? So I think those are basically all the assets I need. I'm not thrilled with how they all look. Like, it doesn't look great, but it's gonna go by so fast, it will work. So now the other asset I wanted to play with that I don't even really have on my storyboard, but it's gonna help me in this, what I call a set to reset, is the atmosphere. All of the mist. All of the stuff that, that makes it a believable landscape is missing right now. We have this mist in the background that's just solid. <laughs> so it, it will look a little weird if it just stays still when nothing else, when everything else is moving. But I created assets for that. They are my atmosphere assets. They're right here. Lots of things I can kind of work with. So basically I want to play with them all at different levels just so I can toggle them in and out. during um, what we're doing. And I can set them at different blending settings as well. So pin light, you know, for instance, that makes it pretty interesting. Okay, so well, let me try pin light here. I'll keep that on normal. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that whole atmosphere folder, copy it, and move it on to the very top here. And now, and I gotta move it into place, right, as a whole folder. Or if I'm unsure, I can just scale it all to make sure it covers. Because it's a real pain in animation when you have different things going on at the edges that distract you, especially when it's moving. Okay, now I've got a whole lot of layers, right? Let's make sense of it. Let's start animating. And honestly, um, I could go through and just program each one, turning folders off, so what do I know I need from the beginning? I know I need every folder off, and I just need all the background assets. Okay, so I know I need that, but I have to make decisions about atmosphere. I also can decide, you know, I don't need this little um, edge here. Let me push that in a little bit. It's not helping my composition. It's not helping my story. And what's great about cropping on your stage is now all of that excess information that was hanging off of your format is now cleaned up. Okay, the other thing I needed was I need the character in the background, but I need him nestled down and hidden. Right? And then I need the character character Y hidden in the foreground. There he is, okay. So it's kind of understanding all of your actors. So now when I start to animate, I have to build all the things I want. I want atmosphere, but I don't want tons of atmosphere. So let me decide where it's most helpful. And instead of having to move it frame by frame or play with the opacities a lot frame by frame, I don't need this one. 
I'm going to clean it up before I start outputting frames. I don't want any of them to be too strong. So if I just toggle between them, Yeah, so this one's a little too strong. It's just a subtle change each time. And then this one, I'm going to rasterize and I'm going to soften it using Gaussian Blur. So I get those color changes, but they're not so intense. Now, that's one type of atmosphere. I just remembered, and this is why it's good to have your folders. Let me see, where did I keep it? That I also, in assignment five, had grabbed in my assets an animation, this one. So let me show you how you can use a GIF asset. I'm going to open this up with Photoshop. And this is going to be specifically for my set to reset. This should be kind of fun. Okay, so I have a full animation that has 238 layers. That's, that's a little much, to be honest. So, but if you play it through, notice it's at 0 0.04 seconds. This is a very, very high motion you know, high speed camera kind of thing. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to change it all to 0.3 seconds. Right. Then I'm going to do something pretty weird. I'm going to play it. Notice that's much slower. I'm going to go to where I think it's the most interesting, which is maybe at this point, starting at 132. And I'm basically going to hmm, grab a range for maybe 128 to 150. So I'm going to grab these layers. We're going to learn how to do this with our animation. So from about 128 to 150, I'm going to make put those into a folder. I'm going to call that. Um, let's call it, what is this called? Ink smoke asset. Okay. Then I take this whole folder, copy it, go onto my stage at the very top above my atmosphere, paste it in. And then I am going to, this is like a texture overlay, grow it super big, maybe flip it all the way around, or maybe from the side. Yeah, that could work. Stretch it. Kind of like your cloud, so it kind of fills everything from the corner. And then I need to set it to a mode that doesn't show the white. That's not it. So it's going to be basically a darkening mode, one of these. Too strong, let's see. So yeah, darker color will work. And then I'm going to take the opacity way down. Okay, so now these assets are going to be kind of fun to play with. Basically, I'm going to play these through every frame. This is going to be slowly coming in and making whatever difference it might make. I wish I could just gouge and blur all of them, but I don't want to go, go in and have to gouge and blur 28 you know, different layers, or however many it is. So now I'm ready to get started. You see, that's darker color, linear burn. Well, linear burn works pretty well. So I'm going to keep it at about 15% of 
opacity. Okay, so now this is my first frame. And what I've done is I'm gonna go through each of my folders and it's kind of, if I was the, uh, the director, I would kind of tell everyone, are lights ready, is makeup ready, gaffers ready, sound ready, check, 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 right? For me, in my GIF animation, that's going through each folder and turning on each thing I want. Okay, so that's first frame. Second frame, notice that we're gonna animate just through these, these little changes in the back. They're gonna feel like almost nothing. And then with atmosphere, I'm gonna start deleting them from the back or dialing them down. So there's little changes each time. And now, actor ready. Is my bug ready? There he is. And if I want my bug to show up even more in this extreme foreground, I'm going to push that bug, move it up through my atmosphere la layers. Again, subtlety does not work so well in animation, right? So there's my bug now. Okay, next frame, build atmosphere. A little bit more, it's like clouds moving. Change the bug's movement. You know, I'm thinking I need the close foreground to be in front of the atmosphere. Uh, not in front of all of it, in front of some of it. Maybe like that. And you see that will change in the previous frames now. Okay, so I have to change my atmosphere a little bit more. Can I do? Maybe just turn that one off. And so I can check each one so each feels a little different. Okay, next frame. And if I have all my assets, I can finish it from here. Now, if I do need to make a change, like if I want to um, add a shadow underneath here, if I'm doing it frame by frame this way, I can do it mindfully. So I can use my burn and I can set an area within the layer that I'm affecting, knowing that this will affect all the the, the frames that use this layer. And I can even just paint a shadow. Let's try that. Kind of a dark gray at a low opacity with a soft eraser. So I can do that. But then I probably want to do it to the one before as well. So you just want to make sure you're not uh, changing it frame to frame because it's always going to be the same. But each of these assets only shows up once. But it's nice to have that shadow underneath now with all that atmosphere. Okay, now with this one, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. So, and then at any time, I can just play it through and see how that atmosphere is changing. Okay, next frame, new bug. Go ahead and paint in the shadow I want underneath it. But remember I have to 